How's it going, Pokemon fans? Shane here from Jolly Mons. And this week, uh, sorry this is a little messed up. I'm kind of doing this last minute. As you know, this past weekend was Fort Wayne Regionals, and Trevor and I did go. So I didn't really have time to record this weekend. So here I am doing this last minute to try and get this to you on time. But anyway, I decided this week I'll just do a deck profile and cover the deck that I decided to play in Fort Wayne, which kind of wasn't the best choice, but it is what it is. Ain't no taking it back now. Uh, I did decide to play Raikou Eels with the Marshadow Toolbox engine. Uh, credit for this deck 100% goes to Andrew Mahone over at Dirium's Competitive Pokemon. You guys should definitely go check him out. He's by far one of my favorite players in this game in terms of, you know, skill and being able to learn from. Uh, but yeah, you guys should definitely go check him out because I 100% got this deck from him and his channel. So, just wanted to give credit where credit's due. But anyway, uh, we did decide to play the Raikou Eels deck with the Marshadow Toolbox. Um, <clears throat> the general thought process behind this was it's consistent. We were going to try and hope to hit quite a few things for weakness and, you know, catch people off guard. But, anyways, uh, the Eels deck's pretty fun. You just, you know, use. This electric right here is where you get the eels from. Uses dynamo ability. Once during your turn before you attack, you attach a lightning energy from your discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon. So you just keep recurring energy, recurring energy, recurring energy. Uh, it synergizes really well, especially over here with Raiko for his Thunder Lance attack. Costs three colorless, and this attack does 20 more damage for each lightning energy attached to this Pokemon. So there's a lot of times where when you need to hit high numbers on, say, a Darkrai EX or some kind of GX, whatever the their active may be, uh, you can slam like six, seven, eight if you need to lightning energy on this Raikou to hit really big numbers. And then even if they knock it out, you just use those ele electrics to you know recur those energy back. <clears throat> uh, I can definitely count at least two or three times uh, in Fort Wayne where I did do that 6-7 energy to take knockouts on Dark Rise and things like that, uh, even once on a Keldeo, you know, so that's one thing that's really cool about this deck. Also, Raikou does have the Shining Body ability. If this Pokemon has any Lightning Energy attached to it, any damage done to him is reduced by 20 from attacks. So he essentially has 140 HP when he has lightning energy attached. And it's especially kind of nifty if your opponent doesn't realize this and doesn't plan accordingly. So there's like your main focus of the deck, the electrics and the Raiko. Uh, we are playing a Tapu Koko. Uh, he also synergizes really well with this deck with his arrow trail ability. When you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench during your turn, you may move any number of lightning energy from your other Pokemon to this Pokemon. If you do, switch this Pokemon with your active. So you can, for example, turn one, uh, you know, you start your active, say you play Bridget, you know, Lele for Bridget, whatever, uh, get like three Tynemo or two Tynemo and a Raikou on the bench, attach for turn to your active bench wherever, and say next turn you get, you know, either one eel or two eels, but you get three energy on board, but they're kind of spread out and you can't really attack, you can drop the Tapu Koko, bring it in with three energy, and go ahead and start attacking. Because for three energy, he is doing 130 with Sky High Claws. Or if you're playing in something like Turbo Dark, you can just come in and Tapu Thunder and knock out their first Dark Rai, like Lickety Split. Because it does do 50 damage times the amount of energy attached to all of your opponent's, act or all of your opponent's Pokemon. So Tapu Thunder can come in and just take a knockout out of nowhere. <clears throat> uh, we did play one Tapu Lele, just for the Wonder Tag ability. And she is kind of nifty to just put energy onto for energy drive to take cheeky knockouts. Um, we did play a Giratina promo. Giratina promo is mainly here for the Greninja matchup. And against Trevenant, you can drop the Giratina promo. And if, if they're active with Trevenant Break, it'll break that item lock for a turn until they, you know, retreat to a non-break. So it's really nifty in getting that you know, little bit of release from item lock. <clears throat> now, we like I said, we did play the Marshadow Toolbox variant here. So we are playing a Marshadow GX for the Shadow Hunt ability. Or he can use the attacks of any basic Pokemon in your discard pile. 
So essentially, we're copying uh, Flash Ray from Jolteon. We're copying Thunder Lance from Raikou. Overspark from Pikachu. Uh, Sky High Claws from Tapu Koko. But we're hitting Dark Rai and things of that nature for weakness. And that's very important. Especially when Dark Rai was going to be very popular and expanded. Uh, we're playing one Jolteon. It really helps against Dark Rai, Volcanion, uh, decks of that nature. Uh, lightning two colors for 70 and during your opponent's next turn prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from basic Pokemon. So it helps kind of lock those basic decks out of the game. Now the only thing is though, keep in mind, if they do get any switch effect off and move your Jolteon to the bench, it does break that lock. So, I don't know how I feel about Jolteon anymore with Guzma. Because Guzma just kind of seems to make it too easy for them to get around it. So I'm not really sure if it's really worth playing anymore. <clears throat> um, this is great out because we don't have it online because I am recording this last minute. But we were playing a Pikachu EX for the Overspark attack. Uh, discard all lightning energy attached to this Pokemon. This attack does 50 damage times the number of energy cards you discarded. So what I would do is say they had like a Dark Rye or something big and beefy out. <clears throat> I would just drop the Pikachu, and this is assuming, because normally I'd have at least three eels out. So we got three eels out, we draw Pikachu, attach energy for turn, and then bring three energy from the discard pile to Pikachu, bring him to the active, and overspark for 200. And now typically you don't want to do that in the early game, because Pikachu is a very liable two prize target, but when, it's your la when you can bring it in and take your last two prizes, and they're not expecting it, because... I mean, how often do you see Pikachu in competitive Pokemon? Not often. It can be really cheeky to, like, <clears throat> get those last two prizes. So, that was always kind of nifty, and Marshadow can copy it, you know, things like that. Uh, so, that's actually it on the Pokemon. Uh, we move over to the items, and we are playing two Battle Compressor. Search your deck up to three cards and discard them. Uh, that's mainly there to help move dead cards and certain matchups to the discard, like Giratina, Marshadow, things of that nature. And also to help us put energy in the discard pile for Electric. Uh, we're playing one Computer Search. Just because it's very important for us to get certain cards at certain times, uh, Computer Search is definitely the better ace spec here. Uh, we don't play enough items for Dowsing Machine, and none of the other ones really kind of fit. So Computer Search is definitely the ace spec here. Uh, we are playing two Field Blower. Uh, Garrotoxin does just kind of wreck us, so we're playing two Field Blower. It also helps us to knock off Fury Belts so we can hit the proper numbers. Uh, two Level Ball to search for Eels. Four Ultra Ball to help us, you know, grab... We are playing Toolbox, so grab whatever piece we need for that matchup. Grab an Eel if we need to, etc. Four Versus Seeker, because it's Versus Seeker. Uh, three Fighting Fury Belt. Uh, Fury Belt with Raiko helps a lot. It makes him pretty tanky. Um, and the 10 damage can do a lot. Like, there is an argument for, like, Muscle Band or Choice Band, but we typically just really need the HP boost. <clears throat> like, typically we need the HP boost more than the, uh, the attack boost. But, and Fury Belt's almost perfect, because i say the most important number to hit is 180. And a 6 energy Raikou is 170, so attach the belt, and that's one-shotting a Dark Rye. So. Uh, we are playing two Float Stone, because it's very important for us to be able to switch when we need to. Because uh, we have to, keep in mind, Raik, or Electric only attaches to the bench. So we have to be able to pull off switch effects. Uh, supporter lineup. We are playing one Bridget, <clears throat> just to help us get set up, uh, since we are playing a 4 a four of evolutionary line in there. So, you know, Bridget will help us get Eels turn one, Raiko, uh, can grab Marshadow, can go ahead and get a Scaratina promo if we need to. Now keep in mind though, you don't really want to use it to grab an EX. I know a lot of us have gotten used to grabbing GXs with our basics, but we do gotta remember that if we grab an EX, it's the only one we can grab. We are playing two Colrus. This is a deck where you're gonna fill your bench really quick. And especially in Expanded, you're going to see a lot of decks filling their benches really quick. So this is definitely a deck we want to play uh, less and more Colrus. 
being able to just shuffle in and draw a bunch of cards is fantastic. It's especially nice with Garbodor even taking over Expanded like it did Standard, because we're not discarding as many items. Uh, to Guzma, because we just need to be able to switch. More often than not, uh, we can get we can Guzma to put something we need to put energies on onto the bench, attach those energies, and then retreat whatever we put up to bring that Pokemon back, but now with more energy. We are, we are playing one Karen for the Night March matchup. <clears throat> Night March is really good and expanded right now. Uh, Marshadow just makes that deck insane. So we definitely want to be playing a Karen to be prepared for that. And we were playing 3N. Uh, this is definitely a deck where you can kind of fall behind a little bit in the early stages. So N's really nice here to kind of put your opponent at smaller hand sizes. Uh, four Sycamore slash Juniper, whichever you prefer. And we are playing nine energy. Um, some people like to play eight. Uh, I tested both. I definitely prefer nine. Eight kind of felt like you were always kind of one short in the late game. So I think nine is definitely the magic number. But uh, anyways, guys, that's pretty much it for this deck. I mean, if you got any questions, uh, just ask me in the comments down below. Uh, one of us will be sure to answer. Now, uh... <clears throat> Like I said, all credit for this does go to Andrew Mahone at Competitive Deeriums, or I'm sorry, Deeriums Competitive Pokemon. Uh, this list was 100% his. It's just what I decided to pilot at Fort Wayne Regionals. So I figured we'd go ahead and just make this the, the deck for the week. Uh, I'm sure I'll get CJ to leave a link down to that channel down below. Uh, definitely go check them out. They're, I mean, his content is A++. Like, he, it's great, trust me. Um... On that note, <clears throat> we should be doing episode 2 of Victory Road, uh, probably recording it sometime later this week, and uploading it next week, probably, would be my guess, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, other than that, I don't, I don't think there's anything else I really got for you guys today. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow, we'll start playing some games with eels, I can show you how the deck runs, and things of that nature, and that, guys... Uh, that's it, so stay jolly.